Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to another a 3D Hangouts. My name is Noah Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit. And joining me every week is my brother Pedro. Good morning, everybody. I'm Pedro, I'm Creative Tech here at Adafruit. And every week we're here to share 3D printed projects featuring all these electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to inspire you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to give uh, some shout outs to everybody hanging out in the live broadcast chat room. And our Discord server. We are at discord.gg slash Adafruit. Come on, join. Oh, man, so many people. What is it, 30, 20,000? Come on. And the live broadcasting chat. Check out all the awesome banter, links, and GIFs. Get through the GIFs show. GIFs and GIFs. Jifes as well. Good morning, everybody. Hanging out. Drew Wester, Paul Cutler, Rosin, hey, hey, Vince, Andy Calloway. Uh, over on the YouTube, we have uh, Vizal Sony from India. Good morning. Hello, good morning. We're on Facebook as well. I'm trying to load that up on Twitch. Good Namaste. morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good night to everybody hanging around all over the world. Yay. Got some awesome projects. Go ahead and jump in to some housekeeping. Housekeeping. All right. Let's. Uh... Get down to it. Pay some bills here with uh, checking out the freebie deals at adafruit.com slash free. You can check out all the deals that are going on. For orders uh, for $99 or more, you're going to get a free half-size Permaproto PCB. For orders that are $149 or more, you'll get the half-size Permaproto plus a KB2040. That's the Adafruit uh, board that can run CircuitPython and Arduino. It's really awesome for keyboards or keyboards. And if you spend $200 or more, you'll get the free KB2040, the half size from Reproto, and plus free ground shipping for continental US only. So check out adafruit.com slash free for all the deets. These get automatically added to your cart, so you don't have to do any special discount codes, but you could always get a special discount codes on Wednesdays for Ask today. An Engineer, like today. Or tonight. Tonight, when Ask an Engineer comes on. Cool, cool. Next up. We're going to look at Help Wanted by going over to jobs.adafruit.com. Check out all the latest job listings. Um, there are some new ones that were posted up, so check this out. Um, it's free to do a kind of resume. You can post up your skills, and if you're looking for folks, you can post up your, uh, your, your job offers. So yeah, it's a free site to do that, and we make sure that nobody spams it, and uh, all of them are, all the listings and, and profiles are uh, vetted by uh, the, the team. So check this out. Okay. For checking out a weekly newsletter, you can go to adafruit.com slash newsletter. You can subscribe to that to get uh, the latest info on the latest products that are added to the shop on the weekly. And this happens once a week. And then um, daily, adafruitdaily.com, you can subscribe to various categories of maker goodness, such as the Python on Microcontroller newsletter. Shout out to everybody for subscribing to that one. This is a good opportunity for folks in the community that are working on Python projects. They can uh, submit their stories and, to Amberella or anyone else on the team. And uh, shout out to everybody uh, sharing their stuff. So you can go to adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to all of those um, newsletters. Cool. Huge shout out to Paul Cutler for doing the Circuit Python Show podcast. This week we got a new episode, so check that one out on the latest uh, Circuit Python happenings. And back over to the Discord chat. Oh, we went through it pretty quickly, so yay! Yeah, we can get right to it if we'd like. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this week's pretty sweet project. Very adorable. It is a set of these little GIF players. GIF players. GIF players. <laughs> GIF players. GIF, GIF. They play them. <laughs> so GIF or GIF, graphics interface format, it's got its own history. It's an awesome image format that lets you have frames and it plays as an animation, hence the name. Um, so these are... Yeah, but these are themed as adorable little TVs with a VCR, so okay. a nice little retro throwback. Or I don't know, is this retro yet? The nice little it Nintendo Switch. It is to me. Yeah, Although so games are still coming out, yeah. so I don't think it's that retro. Yeah. So these are new displays that Lamar has added. They are high quality IPS displays, two different sizes. They have different screen resolutions. One of them has rounded edges, rounded corners, and the other one's just kind of like this 
uh, 13 by 9 style aspect ratio. So they are different. Um, each one has a little slightly different resolution. One's 320 by 170, and the other one's 320 by 172. You get the details uh, on each of the product pages. One is a 1.9 inch, the other one is a 1.43 inch, um, but they're both um, using the same display driver, the ST, uh, ST889. I, have, I don't remember the last numbers. Right, yeah, but they're all spy displays, so you can get really, really um, quick speediness. Um, so yeah, they're, they're using the spy <laughs> protocol. Um, they're all TFT displays. They have pretty good uh, viewing angle because they're IPS displays. So they got nice quality um, viewing angles. And they're both being powered by the Feather RP2040. This project uses both Arduino and CircuitPython together to make this GIF player work. We're using the USB mass storage capabilities from CircuitPython to host and store the GIF file images. And then uh, Arduino is doing the speedy C code that's necessary for decoding the GIF frames. I think you covered all of the I points. So, yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> we'll jump into more details and stuff like that. Uh, some things to look out for. And we'll look at some slice settings and some um, talk a little bit about the design and what design considerations you might need to make when designing uh, these themed enclosures for displays and feather dev boards apologies for faking the playing doom on here i know that's yeah. always the does you it play doom, play doom. <laughs> you can play doom gifts yeah uh, not only doom gifts but breath of the wild gifts so you can kind of pretend like you're playing it could make an excellent little uh jewelry um, like a pendant so this is what we have the little um the what is the split ring thing here yeah, loop loop so you can put that on the necklace and the other th cool thing uh lamar saw this as a, a steam deck uh, ornament for a tree so i want to make sure that you can adjust this to whatever handheld cool you like face plates yeah so you can have this sw swap around uh this is a multi um it's just glued together so you can add some nice little detail and colors and same thing with the little tv stand too you can also do the face swap on this one as well if you don't want a tv or if you want a different style of uh television so you can get a well. tone color, huh? You can print yeah. the, the, the TV frame in one color, and then you get that black border for the enclosure. Yeah, so the back two uh, all snap together, so you can update this to fit whatever other design you want. We have the slides that switch in here to adjust the, um, the turn of the circuit on and off. It also recharges the battery, so you have access to the USB-C port on the back. And everything just press fits in, uh, in place, so... Uh, the screws are holding the the screen and the board together with a nice little frame that's in the center. We'll show yeah. that in the learn guide. PCB frame. Yeah, we cool. have the uh, 420 milliamp hour battery inside, so yeah. that lasts a little bit, but can also be recharged. Same thing with this guy. I'll press fit with the lid. Everything fits inside all nice and snug like. And yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the guide. All the files, the code, and instructions are all there. Oh, forgot to mention the little TV. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, the VCR. A uh, nice little um, accessory. accessory to go onto your retro TV. The antenna are just uh, 1.75 millimeter uh, filament. So those uh, can just get it out. You can use your spare filament. <laughs> Chop those up, put them in there, and then model to whatever uh, antenna ears you used to have. Nice. Very nice. Uh, wish it had some more function, but it's just uh, a nice little thing. Yeah, maybe that could have been the on-off switch. That could have it been. It would have required more design work mm -hmm. on your part, but... Right, let's go ahead and jump into the guide. Ideas. All right, so heading over to the Adafruit Learn system. You can see the latest guides. Let's adjust the window. All right, so we named the Learn Guide Mini Gift Players, since you have two options. You have two different uh, two different displays, so the one point four seven inch and the one point nine inch. Everything the, is in stock. Everything is in stock. Yeah, the RP twenty forty. Originally, we're using the M four, but we switched to the RP twenty forty per Lamar's decision because the RP twenty forties are you, surviving the chip shortage. They're, they're, you can they're actually the get chip. them. They are the only folks that are able to kind of make these chips and get them out to the folks. So think about uh, the RP twenty forty as a kind of a first go to this, <laughs> use this for both projects going forward. So uh, it works well and uh, 
it's cool that we can do both circuit python and arduino you also have a choice with the 420 milliamp um, battery that's a good one there with a short cable and you can choose your uh, kind of thing so the nintendo switch uh, uses the 1.9 inch display and the tv uses the 1.4 inch display as it's just a little bit more um, rectangular i guess yeah yeah cool they're both color you can do colors as you saw yeah, mainly the display, the feather, and a switch and a battery is really all you need for this. So, like I just said, they're all in stock, so yeah. it's really nice to see. A couple screws there, too. You can always get those from McMaster Car or whoever you like to get your hardware screws from. But, yeah, you need a, a, some 2.5, M25 um, screws. Cool. Heading on over to the circuit diagram, you can see here how, uh, the wire, how we're wiring up uh, the SPI displays. Um, they're both pretty much the same pinouts. We're using the same pins. Um, so you can use this as a reference when you're wiring it up. Um, Which yeah. you definitely going to need. <laughs> there's so many. Yeah, there's a bit of a good chunk of wires, you know. Um, what, what can we say about it? The wiring mm -hmm. diagrams, you can, if you'd like to make your own wiring diagrams, we have a link here to the Fritzing software. Um, you'll need to compile it yourself or spend a little bit of money if you want to get it... Uh, installed but we have tons of Adafruit parts um, as a part of the parts library so you can make these uh, click and drag um, wire connections it's a really easy way to kind of create these wiring diagrams uh, yeah there's lots of built-in parts as well into the fritzing software um, but yeah it's always a good visual reference to have uh, the pinouts wired up like this all right so the first thing you want to do with your feather rp20 wire is install circuit python we have a dedicated page on installing CircuitPython. You'll want to click on this green button. You'll go to the CircuitPython site. And then from there, you can um, download the latest build. It's a UF2 file. There is a uh, little reset and boot select buttons that you'll have to press in order to get into the bootloader mode. Once it's in the bootloader mode, it shows up like a USB flash drive on your computer. And then you can just drag and drop the UF2. The firmware has, the bootloader rather, has special firmware that knows what to do when you drag and drop a UF2 file. It'll just automatically start flashing that CircuitPython firmware. So uh, this just walks you through that and a couple screenshots to help you visually. Um, some things to know here in safe mode. That's if you're really, really deep in the trenches. You won't really have to worry about that and if, as long as you just kind of follow the, uh, the standard install song and dance. All right, next up, you'll want to get um, your Arduino set up. So we have a link here on uh, setting up your Feather RP2040 with Arduino. There's a dedicated page. Uh, we're using uh, the Phil Hauer core for Arduino. So you want to install the board profile for those. It is all documented here. You'll want to take a moment to get this all set up. If you haven't done any Arduino on your Feather RP2040, this whole page will just walk you through all the things you need to do in order to get your boards manager um, having, having uh, you know, the Raspberry Pi Pico RP2040 stuff. Um, yeah, so these screenshots were very, very helpful. They helped me out when I was doing all this. Um, so just run through it, and once you install that Phil Hauer Arduino Core, you'll be able to select the Adafruit Feather RP2040 from the list of boards. There's a bunch of other ones too, like the Cutie Pies, um, some of the Stemma boards. Itsy Bitsy's there as well, and of course the Raspberry Pi Pico, the regular Raspberry Pi Pico. And uh, some little notes here, so that is how you install it. Alright, following through that, once you have that all set up, we have a download here, Adafruit GIFs. You can download them separately if you'd like, or you could just use the project bundle. I just tested this out. If you click on the project bundle download button, it'll download the GIFs and the Arduino INO. With CircuitPython projects, it will download the libraries, but because this is Arduino, it's a little bit different. So you're going to want to install uh, the various libraries when you when you uh, try to compile this to the board. Uh, so the first one is the animated GIF, SDFAT. Basically, all of these includes here in the headers are the libraries that you need to install. Um, yeah, so you'll just kind of walk through those. So this is all the code. This is um, by Lamar. So Lamar put this together. And then do, 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 do. we had a lot of help from Liz as well. Um, so shout out to Liz for helping us out with this one too, getting the board configured the right way for us. Um, and then the, some things you want to 
take a look at for sure is the uh, the pins for the dis for the TFT display. You want to reference these with the uh, pins that you wired up. There's a super important note here that the pins in Arduino are not the same pins in CircuitPython. So there's a, a nice page here if you go into the you know the uh, the introducing Adafruit Feather RP2040 Learn Guide, the official Learn Guide for the Feather RP2040. There's a page that's dedicated for Arduino usage, namely so Arduino usage. This is gonna this has a nice paragraph of uh, information on the RP2040 Arduino pins. There is no pin remapping for Arduino on the RP2040. Therefore, the pin names on the top of the board are not the pin names used in Arduino. So there's a nice thing here that gives you an example. So if uh, you're using uh, D5, it's actually really seven, <laughs> GPIO seven. And that's just because uh, the original uh, RP2040 was meant to work with their own SDK, so we had different pinouts, and then for, for Arduino, we had to kind of name them differently. So with that said, you'll want to go to the pinouts and just reference this right here. So we have a nice pinouts diagram. So uh, for our display, we're wiring up to three different d uh, digital pins. So we have D, uh, D9, D6, and D5. And if you look on over here right next to those, you'll see that there are now, there, there are different labels for it. So for D5, it's actually pin seven in Arduino. And for D6, it's actually pin eight. For D9, it's actually D9. So some of the pins do have the same number, the same name. That's cool, but D6 and D5 do not. So you just have to be really aware that when you're soldering um, you know, a wire to the, the, the number five pin, it's actually really seven inside Arduino very specific Arduino. So you see where it says port here? This this is kind of like a, a label. Just imagine port being Arduino. <laughs> that's, that, that's port Arduino. So the yellow Arduino and the gray one is CircuitPython. It even says CircuitPython up there. CircuitPython name. Yeah. So the uh, reason why we didn't call it Arduino port is because, you know, the Pico SDK. Thank you, Pico SDK. So with that out of the way, that took us a little bit of time to figure out. So you want to update these pins accordingly. Cool, cool. Another thing you want to change, depending on your setup, you're going to want to change the uh, display width and display height. Just follow whatever display you have, and whether it's the 1.9 inch, it'll tell you in the learn guide which, uh, which display you want to do. Um, so you want to make sure you update that. And then uh, one last thing you can change if you want to Add your GIFs in a folder. You can change the, the GIF name here variable at the top of the code. And then there's also an option to change the, um, the, the loop number, meaning like how many times you want the, each GIF to loop. We have it set to five, so it's, 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 it's cycling five times each GIF. So you can change that and you can add it to a different folder. Right now it's just defaulted to the root folder of the CircuitPython drive. That in a nutshell is it's all the code stuff. You just really want to be aware of Arduino pin names versus CircuitPython pin names, and you'll be good. But that's really all you really need to change: pins and your display width and height. The other thing I want to mention too is I probably should add a big old warning sign right at the top that says if you're using a Mac, uh, use like whatever terminal command to erase any of the invisible files that Mac OS system likes to create on there. Ooh, because yes. the minute that Arduino sees that, it will crash and won't run any of the GIFs. I ran into that too. So uh, because of that, I suggest just using a full-blown Windows PC for this entire project, unless you know how to go into the command line and, and like delete. disable any invisible of those files, invisible yeah. files being created, because yeah. that is as soon as that it, Arduino sees that, it will immediately crash and not go any further. Yeah. So that is uh, one of the other things to look out for. Yeah, that is true. So yes, Mac folks, you got a little extra, you know, step to work through when you're doing Arduino stuff. So good note there, though. Okay, cool. But that's pretty much in a nutshell all the code. Uh, so shout out to uh, to Liz and Lamar for helping us out with this one. Yeah, Lamar actually had to rewrite the entire uh, GIF decoder. Yeah, uh, there's a library from a BitBank software that did the animate GIF library. So uh, Lamar actually uh, did a PR and they merged it in. So shout out to them for uh, uh, you know pulling it in and making a part of the official library. Sweet. All right, let's go ahead and jump into some 3D printing. Pretty standard uh, settings here. 
nothing really to write home about. Uh, PLA, uh, typical settings. The only supports you'll need are on the frames that hold together the display and the uh, feather. Okay. Well, so I have all that listed there. Just uh, have the interface turned on so the bottoms come out as clean as possible. I also want to use a brim, it looks like. It's you want to use a brim because yeah. of the small little parts there, the yeah. um, standoffs for the uh, screen. You want to make sure that all of those are connected. Other than that, it should print uh, pretty good without supports for the rest. Cool. Yeah, the built-in slide switch has some drafted angles, so it prints without any supports, I think. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Very cool. It's, draft, uh, it's actually a, a fillet. All right, fillets, drafts. Yeah, it's fillets all over to increase the strength. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and jump into the assembly. These are going to be pretty much similar, so I'm just showing the TV. I'm going to hope, I'm guessing that uh, the TV will be the more popular build here. Cool. So uh, after you get all of your um, wiring figured out, we're using the silicone uh, ribbon cables here to make everything a little bit more simplified. Very short distance here. You did a really good job on like managing your wires so like they're. Uh, very very short but also yeah. you know definitely gonna need does that make sense yeah it's definitely going to be one of those tedious you know following stuff back to where it goes to make sure that you are indeed soldering the correct pins yeah. and on the back here i should have had another board you can see here that they are labeled uh, with the arduino pins on the back so you can uh, follow that a little bit more easier than the front yep. and uh yeah here's the yeah there it is seven uh, nine Seven, eight, nine. Yep. There you go. Those are the only digital pins. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. The only caveat here is you're going to have to share the ground pin, so just be cautious of that. On the other yes. side, that's where the slide switch plug into. Right. Okay. Take the back on. Continuing, I'm showing here how to align the frame. We have a little cutout here so it can slip through the wires. And then if you click on that image there, enlarge that, you can see how it actually fits between the two boards to make that little sandwich. Ah, yeah. Ah, you can see the underside belly of the, uh, the ugly side, as we would say it, for the support material. Exactly, yeah, that's but where you're gonna need works. your interface. If you don't have the interface, all those will uh, like sort of fall through and not mm -hmm. look as pretty. Yeah. It's and very that's, small not that it parts, does. so definitely. Yeah, that's one thing I keep forgetting. Look at my hands. It, this is, this is uh, you get to have very, like, very I don't know, small. you need like a microscope or something. Yeah. To hold everything together. Like nano blocks. Exactly. You're definitely going to need uh, some uh, miniature third helping hands. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, truly a miniature. Excellent. You can always right click on an image and make it bigger on the mm -hmm. one guide. Click on it. Yeah, so we're using the uh, M2.5. I don't know why I put 2.4 there. 2.5 by 6, mil oh, six millimeter long screws <laughs> okay. to attach the board and the uh, display to the frame. Uh, you don't need to use all four standoffs. Yeah. I usually just use one on each corner. Yeah, that's what skateboarders do with their skate trucks. They only use two screws. <laughs> yeah, it definitely helps out. Like, hey, man, these screws are expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool. All right. We are yeah, using metal ones fun. here, so just be cautious of uh, it. Say if you're in, you can see why I used, uh, used it in this um, orientation. If I did it closer to where the reset button is, It'll you short might it short. Yeah. something else so always be cautious of that anytime you're using the metal screws but definitely helpful here since they do bite into the frame and create that uh the threading that you're mm -hmm. going to need yeah they're strong pretty good let's see like and here, yep, that's what that looks like there same thing there just did each corner right and so made you're sure. screwing in from both uh, sides mm -hmm. and now you're going to need this otherwise the um the, the ribbon cable is going to sort of flop uh, mm -hmm. inside of the case yeah. and you're not gonna have such a, a sturdy uh, inside to it are these uh chamfered screw heads the uh they're flathead. yeah they're flatheads so that means you have that you have a little edge. bit of a chamfer yeah. yeah so it's not all the way down to the board actually yeah. making any contact yeah, you actually get some clearance in between those surfaces so mm -hmm. you won't bridge anything so yeah. that's nice cool Let's see, move on to the slide switch. You want to make sure that uh, you attach your slide switch uh, at this point. So you soldered it from the top of the board? Soldered it to the top. Because the back. Because mm -hmm. of the way that the positioning, uh, the way it's oriented inside the case. Yep. This will be right at the top by where the wall cutouts for the slide switch will go. Ground and enable. Very nice. 
Go ahead and plug in your lipo battery and then um, you're gonna angle it into the case if you, you can uh, enlarge that photo there. You see that the wiring for the cable will go inside first and then with the JST port facing the case, you're gonna yeah. plop it in at an angle and that should slide right in uh, with the, the, the angle of the fillet that should like help guide it oh, cool. so it positions flat after you uh, It only goes in, in one way, is that right? It only goes in that way. Okay, so it'll just go in that right way. Mm -hmm. you, can see, you can also use the USB port. As a nice little locator. As a, yeah, as a, okay, that USB port needs to be facing the USB port hole. So that'll make sure you get it right. Okay, cool. Yeah, the orientations of the boards probably matter too when you're wiring Absolutely, it up. Absolutely, because so of the way like the... that is how you would do it. Exactly, And yeah. it's pretty much the same process for both displays. Exactly the same. It's yeah. only like the size difference. Right. Even the way that you angle it into the case, it's exactly the same. Like upright with the pins going down is the same orientation for both the screens. Yeah. So that's really nice. You don't have to kind of change the rotation of exactly. the screen. Okay, cool. Once the yeah. board is inside, you can press fit the um, slide switch and that again, you Into enlarge that. Same thing, you gotta insert it at an angle with the uh, the position of the slide, the, the little actuator. switch, yeah, the actuator. You wanna make sure that it's in the center so it'll pop right in. Otherwise, you might uh, get the edge of the cutout and it won't pop in as easy. Yeah. So just uh, make sure you uh, set that and be careful because your, your circuit will turn on at this point. <laughs> That's right. And then it should press fit in. The two little metal um, edges at the side yeah. should uh, slide into these little two cutouts that are yeah. on the uh, opposite side of that uh, wall there for the slide switch. Cool. Here's what it looks like when it's fully seated. The slide switch is fully seated. It'll be nice and parallel with those walls. Yep. You want to arrange your battery so it is, um, you know, not all up against the walls, but sort of centered as much as you can away from that uh, JST port. And then you can uh, align the lid that goes right on top. Yeah. Like you so have you there. This in one way. Yep. You can also look at the little cutout that we have on the lid there. That cutout is for the That's slide so switch walls, so that I can press fit in there. Yep. Strategic cutaways. And that's pretty much it. Just right. press fits right in replace. Uh, uh, the only difference with the um, the slot, the Nintendo Switch one is just gluing the little additional yeah, pieces the on there, the little face plates, or the Joy Cons. Very, very small. One drop of a dab of glue will go a long way. It's a little bit. And one thing I'm not showing there is an activator as well. I did spray uh, yeah. some activator on the blank face plate We're as well. The activators now. And the reason, yeah, the reason we did that is if you. Uh, show the uh the, oh, the other one yeah you can see that the printing on this it's not super flat you see how it's like kind of raised yeah. you know it's not like super flat the just because of the um the leveling of the bed right. uh, you do want to you know make sure that's uh, nice and level right. um could also use a decal if you want to mm -hmm. do that you can export a svg there you go DSI that would actually be a lot more easier and, uh, well when you transfer vinyl, you gotta use transfer tape, and you gotta align it right. And then, like the, the texture of this, it might not, you know, adhere as well. So True. there you yeah. go. There's so there's copy yeah. You can paint it like as well. You can do that as well. Yeah. You can actually yeah. use this as a stencil too, uh, like right. spray paint it or something. But uh, we went we went this route. Yeah, this is a good route. It's I like the raised parts. that just gives you depth mm -hmm. and texture. All good things. You see a antenna. One antenna, like I said before, it's just uh, two pieces of the 1.75 millimeter filament that create the antenna. Cool, now the all feathers have built in uh, LiPo battery recharging over USB. So you just charge it over USB, it has smart charging, so you can just plug it in and it automatically, um, it'll automatically uh, start recharging the battery and uh, it'll stop when it's full. Yeah. Let's see. Cool, and that's quick little, uh, yeah, uh, Paul on. This Paul Eric on YouTube is asking, I get it uses a battery, but it also charges and maintains it. Yes, there is a charging circuit on the Feather RB2040. Yeah. Plug this in and it will charge it. Yeah, away. there's some polarity protection as well, so you won't blow up the battery and mm -hmm. things like that. It's very nice. Quick, just to show what that looks like, you can see the little indicator turns mm. orange when you plug it in. Yeah. Any charging kind of the battery. Point, well, half an amp, you know. Hub will charge it fine. Yeah. I think the charging rate is also half a name. Mm. Right? Or 0.25 something amps, like that. something like that. 
So yep, so it's kind of a slow charge, but it's good for the bigger batteries, I think, right? The slower charge is mm -hmm. better for battery life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, we haven't quite reached any limits, really, with the gifts. Like, I don't know what a file limit would be. How much storage you get on there, yeah. I don't remember. However, however big the, uh, the spy flash is on the RP2040, let's take a look here. Is it two megs or is it four? I forget. Eight megabytes Eight. of spy Whoa. flash. There so. you go. So you got some room for some GIFs in there. And a lot of these, uh, you do have to have them sized um, to the correct screen uh, size. That's how screen we included size. a few so the folks can right away play with I them. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're there. Once you hit the download project bundle or you download them individually, mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to be using these um, going forward. Yeah, so there's... We're going to do more GIF players and stuff. Yeah, so there's eight GIFs that are included. We have the Breath of the Wild one. We have... Um, the uh, Circuit Playground Express board that spins around, the mon the LED matrix, uh, LED glasses that spins around. We've got some Arduino animation, title animation logos, some Circuit Python animation, uh, this little um, Guardian robot. Mm -hmm. What else? I can't remember the other ones. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Very own John Park there playing. What's his name? The character dude who plays Doom? Doom guy. Doom guy. Yeah, we had some PCBs <laughs> that we did. Yeah, there's the CPEX. The uh, Matrix really LED well. glasses. Yeah, really good. Oh, yeah, the Braincraft. Oh, yeah, the Braincraft. So all these are just, uh, you can edit these in Photoshop or GIMP. And you should make adjust. a 3 Hangouts GIF of us, like... It's a good idea. Kind of shuffling around. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we're watching ourselves. <laughs> we'll watch 3D Hangouts on a tiny little TV. <laughs> yeah, so very, very cool. Um, great work on the enclosure. It's a fun theme to work with. Yeah, uh, perfect for little miniatures or any other displays um, or ornaments, dior dioramas mm -hmm. or anything like that, ornaments um, that need some little life, uh, like some Lego builds. Yeah, Lego builds. Which we, I think that we're going to use it as the segue into uh, what are we prototyping? Yeah, all right. Any Again, questions? if you guys want to download all these, um, all the Fusion 360 files or the STLs, if you want to just go ahead and print those out, ready to go. The GIFs are in the zip file inside of the um, the uh, code right. page. Yeah, so you can grab all those there, and yeah, nice little awesome little way to make a miniature project. Yeah, cool, cool. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and jump into uh, what are we prototyping? We like were saying before Segway with Lego. Yes, let me go grab it. Got more Lego. Lego, 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 Lego. Okay, and welcome to what are you prototyping? <laughs> All right, this week um, I wanted to prototype some CNC milled Lego bricks. Why? I have a ton of scrap wood cut off pieces, and I was like, I want. I don't want to throw all this stuff away. There's only something I could see and see that's like kind of small and like I can make a bunch of them and like it'd be cool if they could like build something too. So Lego bricks, CNC milled Lego bricks out of wood is what uh, what the idea came out to. And I did some research and uh, I modeled up my, um, my stuff. I did some tool paths. I did some tests. And the cool thing about this one is that I'm actually using Lego base plate as a jig to machine the top side because these are CNC milled um, parts that need to be machined on the top and the bottom. So uh, so we got our tops figured out, right? We got those figured out. We, we love our studs. We know exactly what the spacing is. We know what the diameters are. We know what the heights are, so we got that. But then getting the bottom side uh, was a little bit of a challenge because like, well, how am I going to fit this and stick it uh, onto the bed of the CNC machine where it won't fall off and I'm not using so much tape So I ended up figuring out like I can use a base plate to uh, to actually fit this and then mill the top side So the idea is that we actually mill the bottom sides first Right because we have a nice flat surface when we start we mill this out and then we flip it over and then we use a, a, a legit Lego base plate as a way to snap it in and it stays snapped in and it's able to mill the top side there and I have precise placement because the Lego always has precise distances and spacing between the studs. Uh, so this right here is some purple heart wood and we also did cherry 
and then we also did um, maple and I'm, and I'm also yeah maple cherry and purple heart so what's cool about uh, the first batch I did they are sort of arbitrary brick heights these are not compatible with legit Lego mm. so I reworked the design and made them the exact height and, and, and width so that I can use legit Lego in between these so you can mix and match plastic and wood and make little uh, little things you know and they still come apart which is nice and you can stack them of course and they have some pretty decent um, the tolerances. tolerances yeah um, I'm finding that the Purple Heart has a little bit more uh, it's a little bit more tougher to kind of snap and I find uh, the cherry and the maple work really well so uh, I am working on making some more and then I'm also going to do some custom shapes um, because the whole point is that you have the complete you know free reign of making whatever shape you want so maybe some unconventional shapes and maybe even some rare bricks that you can't get anymore like $80 bricks that are like they don't make them anymore and that's why they're $80 it'd be kind of funny to kind of mill them now I don't have a base plate here um, like a legit Lego base plate I have them in the other room um, but it'd be nice to kind of show how they fit on the plate I have a 3d printed plate so I guess I could just add them here but the idea is that you would snap this in to your base plate and then this you just put some double-sided stick tape here and then now you have a, a jig here for milling the top here. Obviously this is already milled, but you can you can imagine that this was just flat, nothing there yet. Yeah, so working that out. Um, you get really, really nice uh, textures and, you know, cause they're all wood, right? And uh, yeah, it's been really fun. You only need two tools to mill this, a flat, uh, both are flat end mills. One is a 1 8 inch, that's to do the contours and the surfacing to get your, your thickness correct. And then to do the, um, to do the studs and the tubes, uh, I'm using a 1 16 inch, and that's able to do, uh, you know, it's able to go in between these studs, or these tubes rather here. And it uh, works out really well. Um, yeah, so I'll be doing a learn guide and a video. I'll release some files as well um, for uh, both G code and the actual fusion files so folks can uh, um, mill their own if they have some scrap wood that whole that's the whole idea is to like what can I do with all the scrap wood and uh, making Lego bricks is a really cool one so there you go what's cool is uh, from that scrap wood that you can could not make anything out of now you can yeah 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 that's the, that's the whole point is to use this stuff um, there are some wooden but building blocks you can get like on Amazon but I found that they are actually not compatible with Lego. They also suffer from like the different uh, thickness. So here you can see like they, they just work well, but let's imagine, let's try to get one of these in. It won't work as well because, you know, they're just not the right thickness. So this is the point of the show. We're just playing with Lego for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> I have to hit that. From the chat, probably... Andy Calloway says, "Wooden Lego equals lingo." Lingo, yeah. Like uh, Lingo. Yeah, you can see how it's that right there would make it not. You know, if you're trying the to do same height, like yeah. That. Yeah, you have that little gap there, so that's why I was like, okay, forget this. Like, I gotta make it. I gotta separate these from like the legit batch. Yeah, I think cherry is it's a really nice one that tends to be less messy and more like dense like the fibers of the materials it seems like it's more dense uh, but yeah i'm gonna I, I gotta try some different shapes man just doing the two by four though is a good basic brick they can kind of build your you know your your average uh kind of pencil holder or whatever mm -hmm. wall tower thing what i like is yeah what the, is this called when you use different beautiful. um what is that a, there's a name for that like in woodworking where you use like different types of the the yes yeah, like, the like cool, types it's the cool mosaic pattern i guess yeah there you go you can build one of those cool really um mosaic patterns yeah so, having a lot of fun there um i'm actually filming too so getting all that filmed and stuff so cool very very fun um yeah lego 
wood. We're going to call them wooden building bricks. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And of All course, right. we have our little mascot here, which uh, jumps us into shop, shop, shop talk. So our little Adabot is uh, crossing the year five. It's five years old now. And some of the tolerances are starting to wear out. Like his hand won't stay up sometimes. And uh, the antennas sometimes break off. So Pedro uh, went ahead and started uh, printing out some new Lego, uh, some new Adabot. I just wanted, parts. just wanted to show what it looks like when you're printing it out. Here's what a uh, little set of his arms, legs, and torso look like. Kind of focus for some reason. Oh, there we go. Yes, that's yeah. what it looks like when it prints out. I just print all these as a batch. That's his uh, little uh, feet, his hands, and then his head over here. So we are doing the dual extrusion to get all the colors in there. And uh, can be painted, but a little bit more easier to have the little eyeballs and all that in there where it's a part of the print. And I should have grabbed a uh, some tools to remove his eye or his uh, like? support materials. I okay, already tweezer? broke my nails. <laughs> so you like some tweezers? What do you need? Let's see. Oh, there you go. That, that comes off nice and clean. All the files, of course, are on the um, inside of Learn, so you can grab those and print your own Radabots. But I think we're going to make a couple of sets of these and uh, use these as little giveaways. Yeah. If you meet everybody us, wants a nice you little Radabot. out and about, maybe at a Lego store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll, uh, we'll give you one. Super cool. So yeah, that's what they look like when they are printed out. So we'll have a bunch of these to replace our, because uh, they do lose tolerance after a while, mm -hmm. especially when you're uh, testing out like new Lego parts exactly, that you're printing. Yeah. I've broken you, some. T you tend to uh, to loosen the tolerance on them. Yeah, I would so. love to see somebody print these in resin. Anybody out there with a yeah. resin printer? That would look nice. We have uh, subtracted ourselves from resin. Uh, if you just type in minifig in the Adafruit Learn site search bar, uh, the first one up is the webcam cover and Adabot minifig. So that's where you can get the files for the Adabot minifig. We have a mass two, one that is a dual extrusion, and then one that is in different pieces so you can uh, print out. Yeah, you can make any modifications to it using the, uh, the, the, the file. I think the only important um, setting for this one is to make sure that it is printing at 100 microns, so it is nice and detailed. You have all that. Uh, yeah, that's a big smooth note. tolerance. Say it again. <laughs> 100 microns. 100 microns. Point one layer height, not yeah. point two. Point one. I mean, it'll work, but if you look at the face, for example, this one was printed at a point two. Oh wow! Yeah, I do loose. Uh, There's an angle here in the tube for the claw. Yeah. Huh. I guess you mirror this arm bit yep oh that's another thing too i think i have it in there that you do have to mirror the legs and the arms yeah you want to download the file right here at the top right download the fusion 360 archive and that'll give you the whole thing sometimes models that are hidden won't show up here but yeah you can merge these two together if you do if you just want a single color a bot so you want to merge those right yeah yes the instructions on how to do that is inside the guide these are all, you know, separate models for dual extrusion, but mm -hmm. you can merge those all. So it's like the hips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where's his legs? Oh, right here. There's one leg. Oh, right. That's an assembly. So two, two of these, the hips. Two arms, the two, body. Arm, two legs, yeah. two hands. Yeah. Cool. Any questions? Just no links there. All right, that's a uh, little shop talk. Just looking Maybe back at uh, small. making some new Edabot parts. Wow. Whoa, <laughs> wow, it's amazing! It's kind of funny to see Edabot's head exploded like that. Anywho, folks, that's shop talk. All right, let's jump into community, community makes. makes. What do you know? More Lego and community makes. Yeah, sorry folks, we have like a month of Lego compatible. Right. Lego compatible projects. So yeah. this is by Dave Makes Stuff. We've had a couple of time lapses from Dave. He, he makes good stuff. Um, so this is a articulated snake and it has Lego studs built into the top. We used uh, quantum filament from Matter Hackers. It has that two-tone color. So one side looks gold, the other side looks purple. Very, very fun filament. Check it out if you haven't already. But the studs work out. 
And here's Pedro snapping in all these little minivigs. Always impressive when yeah. these studs work with uh, actual Lego. Yeah. No supports needed. Um, any details on the model? No, it came out perfect first time. Um, so again, that's another thing that's surprising, and I do like the articulation of um, all the joints. Yeah. So it has some really nice articulation for you know whatever play for kids. Add some wood to that. Ha. And there it there is. And then the um, the filament two came out pretty well. You can see that we have that. Oh wow! It almost has like a color. It almost like kind of goes back into the purple. Uh huh. So so one side has both gold and purple. Exactly. Pretty neat. Yeah. Pretty neat. Yeah. It's always surprising when the um, filament doesn't like sort of turn around inside of the extrusion, so you get like that weird uh, banding effect. But this one, it came out very nice. Nice flat bottom, perfect surface adhesion. Really neat um, texture here for the scales. Mm hmm. Yeah. And excellent. Like this narrowing effect. Excellent job on that. There's a couple of different snake designs that uh, Dave makes has been posting. Yeah, I think posting. Dave had some letters too. That's the first one that stuff. I saw because I was going to print that one out for Ducklin. Oh, yeah. Get his uh, ABCs on a snake. He likes snakes. And, uh, you know, nice little way to teach him all the ABCs that has them written on the top here. And then Phil saw this Lego one and said, hey, make this one. <laughs> yeah, that's what Phil does. Make this. <laughs> Very politely. What else I could build? Like a platform. It's mm -hmm. a saddle. <laughs> there you go. I built a saddle. Very cool. Go ahead and check out the uh, the link there to his oh, thing right. verse. Let me pull that up. Play around with it while I pull it up. Ooh. It's still loading. There it is. Looking good here. Much more elaborate little build there than I did. Yeah. You got little minifigs. All and I like the uh, the sand color there. Yeah, it's a good good color. Also, yeah. Wow, that came out really good. Mm -hmm. This is FDM. Yeah, I think so. You almost see the layer. Maybe it's like a higher. Uh, Maybe it's a layer height. That's even yeah. higher. All right, we'll do a quick read here. Dave. Hey, what she, what she calls it? The brick boa. Brick boa. I like that. One of your favorite Lego pieces. Here's a video. And here is for a stable download. If you want to go to Planes, in case the, this website goes down. Um, but yeah, like a ball and socket joint, like a snake test. There's a short version as well, so check that one out just to kind of test out your tolerances. That's pretty ah, smart. Yeah, yeah. Um, surface texture and design was, was done in end typology. Cool. Wait, that's a program? I think so. End typology. Oh, okay. All right. You have to check a look at the um, all of his designs. You can see some of the other snakes, which I believe that topology program is what he's using to create these Veronoi. Veronoi snakes. Yeah, these look freaking awesome. Oof. Look at these. Wow. Right? So some like shoes and a couple of other models. Super. Yeah. Oof, that I hope is nobody has pretty uh, clean. Wow. The whole is, <laughs> a little, little I feel like we need to print those out now. Or maybe the eggs, just because of how cool those... Uh... OPT lines of shoes. Yeah, yeah they made shoes. shoes. Some Adidas shoes. Very cool. So yeah, check out Dave's Make Stuff. Make some really cool, very nice stuff. Very cool. And I think we have some community makes this week. Yes, we do. So let's run through those. Let's jump into that. We got a really cool iPhone telephoto or sorry telescope adapter we do oh no that's case sorry <laughs> this is the iphone x case from several years ago um squasher joe on printables uh posted their make so they made it in tpu filament it's a flexible uh, kind of bumper and the images aren't loading right now so i well. show them to you but uh there's a little thing of it there is a good Thing of it yeah so you can see here i think it's an updated did you did you i did not one? i did not have any of those in there right. so yeah so they this remixed is it or something very nice so squasher joe says printed in every every one tpu works yeah. well we haven't tried their tpu yet so good to see that it works oh no you did see there's your design but you didn't add like a burn i think that's what i was looking at yeah neat it's got little buttons and stuff cut out for the volume switch 
They're always a pain to make. Yeah, those are fun. Should check them out. Just have PLA ones too. Okay, next up. Got another one here from Printables, formerly known as Prusables. So this is a Raspberry Pi case for the HQ camera. And our latest make is from uh, 560. 560 posted up their photos. It says printed in Prusa Mint Clear Pet G. It works out really great. He remakes the back panel to fit the Pyramoni Hyperpixel 4.0 display, which oh. also works out great. Modularity for the win. Nice. Oy, I love that comment. Only Oddity was getting the camera ruin cable to fit right, but there was a, that was easily taken care of by threading the FPC cable around the board by the SD socket. Very cool. There was just um, enough room there between the side of the SD card and the standoff on the corner for the Hyperpixel. I need to get myself a Hyperpixel. Look at this. I was yeah. going to say, mm, it looks really, really nice. That was really nice, but look at the display. Mm -hmm. It's just boom, boom, boom. It's wow. very, very big, very, very beautiful. It, it encapsulates the size of the uh, the vine. It's like bigger than the it's, vine. Yeah. <laughs> so that is super dope. Shoot shot, it's Pyramonia. I got to get me one. That's oh, geez. fantastic. I want to use this as just a... Imagine our Pi Octoprint. Our Octoprint. You know what we really need to do is have an Octoprint just for the CNC machine. Because mm. now that I'm doing these longer batches... I'm always going back and forth between the room yeah. just to make sure that my bit hasn't broken or the mm -hmm. wood hasn't fallen off of the bed. Besides so. that one, uh, we need to redo the Octoprint Learn Guide. I keep seeing fa feedback on there, like, does this work with this? And it's like, you know, six years old or whatever, like using the Whoops. the you the touch UI. All right, we need to totally revamp that. So you made that entire thing do this year. Yeah, with, right. with the Hyperpixel, it looks super cool. Yeah, with the Hyperpixel, very cool. Um, does it? Maybe we can get one from here. Too. Dr. Pixel. Sorry, folks. Uh, I thought we were stocking it, so. What is this one? Whoops. All right, I'm putting an order in. <laughs> and it's a touchscreen, dude. What? Order. Fantastic. Yeah. Sorry, Lola. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm glad they're in stock. <laughs> cool. You ready? Pick them up before we order 10 of them to get no, all of the printers. We are not ordering 10 <laughs> of them. Each one needs a. It's a part shortage. You have to be very, <laughs> very one limited per customer. All right, well, that was a fantastic make, huh? Made us buy something <laughs> or buy our money. What so shout out to one? 560 for that uh, modification to their case. If the files are out there, I'm going to need to ask them. Hey, can I get those files? So nice. They look great. So fantastic build there. What was the uh, link for that available on the. <laughs> we have them in stock. I already added it in the cart if you want to log in. It's PID 3578. 3578. I have 11 items in the cart, so it looks like I got a bunch of uh, heat shrinks and stuff. Mm. Just kind of our consumables that we go through. Yeah. All right, one more. We have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, one more. Uh, from John. I was looking at my cart. Like, what are you doing? Is this the magic wand from John? No, it's actually. Uh... Oh, the Galaxy's Edge. Um, bottle cap? Bottle cap. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I don't know what that was. On my head. <laughs> Sorry. There you are. Like trying to post all the links before. <laughs> Chug it, I must be dying here. All right, so this is a really cool bottle cap for those custom soda bottles that they have at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I forget. They're why. actually very useful I for folks like why. your. Uh, when Gavin was five or six, he struggled to open these bottle caps, and these have such great like edges to grip onto. Mm -hmm. it, it it turns it into a uh, uh, accessibility accessibility thing. And the other thing is like this. It's modular. It just snaps in over your standard cap, mm -hmm. so you can use it for uh, other bottles. They're not standard. I did make a couple oh, of sizes right, right, right. based on whatever right. bottles I had lying around, so you have multiple Let's sizes. That one. Like that one. It might fit on you know, just a regular cap. I don't know what the size is. I don't remember I made this so long ago, but yeah, right. it would but fit right on you there. You can change the diameter in the spline count if you want. thought I had one around Yeah, we somewhere. thought so too. But anyway, um, a fellow over here on uh, Principles, JS, posted this up. And they say, nice model. I've been looking for a way to tag my drinks at the fire station, and I found it. Mm -hmm. uh, to let it to let it fit a standard US soda bottle or, or water bottle, not the lightweight water bottles. I reduced the X and Y in the Prusa slicer to 45 millimeters. I printed it in Fusion's Infusion filament, uranium yellow, HTPA, H, HTPLA at uh, 0.2 layers, and it fits perfect. Thanks for the cool design. I'm gonna sneeze. 
I know I had Excuse one me. around here somewhere, but I've done lots of. So Maybe cool! You could, you could just modify. You could just change the. Oh, the just the scaling. Spicer, yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so that worked out well for like kind of your regular sort of mm -hmm. model. But yeah, yeah, isn't that awesome? And it's a good way to label your drink. No, that's perfect. We have that problem here. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Very, very cool. Yeah, I need to print more of these. Mm -hmm. The Fusion 360 file, I did uh, release that, so you can just edit oh, the sketch. Yes. Yeah. So you can edit the sketch for the diameter. Why isn't that working? Oh, it's a 3D file. I guess so. Looks like you have uh, the diameter. There it is. 30, 30 34. 34. 30. I guess 45 was uh, what uh, JS mm -hmm. put, put up there. And then that's what the uh, the actual bottles at Galaxy's Edge is. Right. Yeah. Whatever that is. Yeah, they're, they're cute little Coke bottles. I don't drink soda, but. I know. I I think that's when we had just started keto, so I bought that just to I, like I took one sip and then yeah, here mom. do the whole thing. Out. <laughs> yeah, like, I'll bring it. I love Coca Cola. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah, the Dasani Dasani water bottles I think had the the same caps as oh, well. Did they? Wait, yeah. did they? No, I don't think they had the water bottles. I think that's why I did that, so I right. could put it on there. Right. All right. So it was very cool, make. And then we have one last one. Here it is. If I can click. All right, and this one's from Thingiverse. This is the one I was talking about. This yes. wand. So this is a remix from our our uh, Sonic oh. LED glowing emerald from what? the Sonic movie. How is oh? So uh, ah. uh, Kalis eighty six posted this up on Thingiverse as a remix. It says a a scepter for the small emerald to be printed in two parts and glued together. I also <laughs> included the Fusion three sixty file for modification. Nice. This just looks cool. What a great. Thing. Mm -hmm. I figured there's a bunch of emeralds that you could work with, but no, I guess. How cool! This is a nice, simple emerald that you can reuse and remix and, and, and kit bash into your prop. So that's really cool that you can just kit bash some of these parts. It's very, very cool. I like it. I, I, I'm not sure what the scaling is, but it'd be cool to see like a big version of that. Mm -hmm. So shout out to Kelly's 86. Awesome. Closing that up, and that is this week's community makes. Thank you everybody for posting up your makes. And all the different sites I like seeing principles, printables, and thingiverse. So there we go. All right. Any fun gifts? We got some fun gifts. We got B B D one. Is it D B one? D B one from Yanni. Posting that up. Can't wait for that Lego kit. Did you see they released a mini um, Infinity Gauntlet too. A mini Infinity Gauntlet. I don't know why you need a small one <laughs> for the kids. All right, and I think that's going to be it for this week. Okay. Well, we're on just on time. We got about a minute. Yay. Don't go anywhere tonight. We got two shows. Show and tell. We invite you to come on and share your stuff. It starts at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You will get an invite um, in the Discord chat room. You just click on the link. And make sure your camera and microphone are all ready. Hey, Pooch. Little dog came in. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I think it's going to be hosted by Lamar and Phil. Come here. Come on, boy. Come here. <laughs> You're going to make him think it's time for a W-A-L-K. <laughs> and then, um, can you push the E button? There you go. <laughs> uh, what else? Ask an Engineer starts at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Yes. Tune in for all the latest, what's going on, behind the scenes, and new products and projects. Yes, this is a Saluki. He's a mini Saluki. <laughs> it's like, where's my food? squirrels. I go not say that. <laughs> He's going to think they're here. Okay. So, show and tell. Ask an engineer. Back to back. Get a coupon code at uh, 9, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Mm -hmm. Ask an engineer. Full hour of Lamar and Phil, open source hardware, top secrets. News and more. Um, INMPI. And then tomorrow, we've got John Parks Workshop. Awesome projects always in the works. And then on Thursday, uh, Friday, Deep dives with, with Tim, Tim funny guy. Um, we might see Scott back as well. We're still, uh, yeah, check back. <laughs> Every Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific or mm -hmm. 5 p.m. Eastern. And then on Sundays, we have Desk of Lady Ada. Yep. Uh, last week's episode, I think um, Phil's going to upload yeah, soon. Yeah, the research. Mm -hmm. yeah, so so that'll research. be up soon. Yep. Check that out. All the awesome uh, um, search with DigiKey, so all the latest parts that Lamar is searching for during this part shortage. To make sure to tune in for that. Yep. And then Tuesdays is uh, uh, JP's product pick of the week. This week it was the uh, the joy stick. Yes, feather wing. the feather joystick. Pretty cool. cool. 
Mm, yeah, every uh, you get up to fifty percent off select parts. So you during. can only get during the show. Yeah. So make sure you are uh, subscribed. Uh, Mondays we had the Circuit Python meeting with the exception of US holidays. This week we had a US holiday on a Monday, so it happened yesterday, which was Tuesday. Yeah, every normally every Monday at two PM Eastern time. And this happens in the uh, Discord chat room. You can listen to the recap on YouTube, and I think the audio recording stays inside of the um, the CircuitPython uh, Discord yeah. chat room. I also subscribe to the podcast on like the podcast app for Apple. So you do that. We have those as well. So yeah, every Monday, check this out. And then uh, back over to Wednesdays. We do the show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Yeah, Eastern time. Matching the colors of the, the theme. Yeah, you are. Ah. All right, and that's it for the show. Good luck with all your maker endeavors. And yes, with yes. that, remember to make a great day. Make a great day, folks. See you later tonight. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you tonight. Bye. Woo.